if only we had a crystal ball, wouldn't it be wonderful to actually know what the donor of the future might look like? Sadly, we don't. <laughs> when I began fundraising in the 80s, if someone had told me then that people today would be making donations on their smartphones by text, I would have looked at them and shaked my head in disbelief and said, one, what is a smartphone? And two, what is a text? Remember, this was the 80s, the era of clunky, refrigerator-sized computer technology, dictaphones that you used to record conversations and take, took care of those files after. And this, the wonderful overhead projector. How many of you actually use transparencies? My first introduction to plan giving was actually at an advancement orientation with the plan giving director who showed me how to record information on Rolodex cards. We have come a long way. There were no iPhones back then. Look at this transition in technology from Rolodex cards to this. If you look at the green highlights from the telephone at the bottom, the cell phone in the middle, and the smartphone up at the top, technology has changed. The pace of adoption is so quick, absolutely. Amazing. The more recent the innovation, the quicker the adoption pace. Today, 75% of Canadians have cell phones, smartphones. The pace of change is blisteringly fast. Today, our phones follow us everywhere. They track our every move. They know where we've been, sometimes what we ate, who we talked to, what we like to do, where we took a taxi, and perhaps what charities we like or are interested in. So from my era even, and hopefully I'm not that old, but we've gone from rotary phones with cord, long cords to this, a texting lane that was put together in Chongqing, China for mobile users, or should we perhaps call them addicts? <laughs> so what lies ahead? It's really hard to predict. The one thing I can say for sure is that without innovation, the charitable sector will suffer. It is going to be critical. Look at the change we've experienced. So these are a few of the things that, you know, in seven minutes, I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about. Not that I can give you all of the detail, obviously, but I'll give you one thing that I do think is going to be critically important too. Even with all of these new technologies and changes in the world, I think that high touch is still going to be critically important alongside the high tech. So the landscape, Canadian market share in charities is shifting and changing. This just shows you the last 15 years, but take a look at the yellow pie. 2001, religion had 38% of the market share. 2014, and it's still consistent today in 2016, 17, we're still using CRA data, it's a couple of years old, but religion has decreased to 30% market share. What has increased? Welfare and health. The boomers are having an effect here, right? There's one area that doesn't even show up on the chart. Can anyone guess? And I'll give you a hint. It would be green. Environment. Environment, yeah. I think the millennials are gonna have an impact here. This is gonna look different in 10 years. Lots of things going on. So this slide, you know, it's probably not best practice. There's a lot going on on there. That's kind of the point. Technology today is very busy very crowded, and I could have added tons more logos, but it was making my eyes a bit crazy. Technology today is changing at just a blistering pace. And this is where the donor of the future is living. Mobile phones, let's just talk about those for a second. Four in 10 are using their mobile phones to actually look at charities. And half of those people are making gifts online. And guess what? Some of them are even using Apple Pay to do that, right? Are you? thinking about that. Charities, too, I think are actually the original social enterprises. Right? Today there's a lot of talk and influence about social enterprise because the millennials really like to have an impact in the world with not only their jobs but also with the, their purchases. Right? And there's a lot of things going on there. I think the millennials are going to have some big, big influence. Social media. I'm sure all of you are on many platforms, but how many of you might actually check them daily? And how many of you have your organization on Snapchat? Did you know 100 million daily users on Snapchat? Looking at 10 billion videos daily. I mean, that's mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. So there is a market there. 
And there are some charities there. Are you? So this is what happens, and Frank, I was interested in your ACLU comment. Does anyone know what this is? <laughs> this is what happens when young tech-savvy people get really fired up about a cause, okay? This is the Amazon Dash button that a young woman hacked to work so that she could make a $5 donation to the ACLU every time Trump said something she didn't like. <laughs> you can buy this for $4.99 on Amazon the IOT button, the Internet of Things, and hack it. There's all kinds of information on the Internet, how to hack it. There you go. <laughs> December 2015, 400 men and women got together at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They were going to go on a little trip to Ethiopia. They didn't need plane tickets, though. They put on their little virtual reality, reality headsets and watched a nine-minute video. This made a big impact. The end of the night, $2.4 million. Now this technology is niche, but the price is coming down and there are a lot of organizations that are using this to great effect. Yeshi, how many of you have chatbots for your organization? This is Yeshi. She's a young girl, she is a chatbot. You can connect with her via Facebook Messenger and actually learn more about the water crisis. Videos and chatbots who talk to you as you engage online bring new understanding to things that are going on around the world, and I think there's going to be more of this. Mergers. There might even be a few of you here from these organizations. I'm sure many of you, or most, or all of you read about this latest merger in the globe just recently. There have been a lot more mergers in the U.S. There's a lot more talk about it here in Canada. Donors are asking for them. This one, I think, is going to set perhaps a little spiral of things to come. I'm sure there are going to be more ahead. The ruby red shoes. Anyone recognize these? Another interesting story. You know that technology is gaining ground when even the Smithsonian is on Kickstarter. So these shoes, 6,000 donors supported the campaign to raise over $300,000 towards the preservation of those beautiful shoes. So, to wrap up, what do I believe lies ahead for the donor of the future? Well, more technology, that's clear. More social enterprise, more mergers, and more change. So what can you do to keep a pace? Think about diversifying, innovate, try new things. Don't wait. You'll be kicking yourself if you don't get started now. The one thing that I can predict with certainty is change. Thank you.